Hey, this is David with Theater Advice or Home Theater Advice because I couldn't put that uh, couldn't put Theater Advice in my channel. Uh, first, start with uh, please like and subscribe to the channel so you know when new content's coming out. I'm really going to try to put helpful content out uh, every week if I can. Today is going to be a piggyback on the screen, uh, the 15 minute screen video I actually uh, finished recently. Uh, talking about different screen technologies and why you should have an uh, acoustic or a, a, why you should have an ALR screen or ambient rejecting light screen. Um, so this screen is very important because we get a lot of clients that come in and they want to not see anything, right? They want their speakers to be behind the screen, which is totally fine. Um, I have that at home. The problem is to do that correctly comes with uh, with a price tag. What I mean by that is there's only uh, two ways to do an acoustically transparent screen. So an acoustically transparent screen is either going to be a weave, which is always going to be white. Um, if it's gray, it can create like striations and lines. So do not buy a gray uh, AT screen. Um, but, you know, piggybacking on what I said last time, right? So I go 15 minutes talking you out of a white screen almost completely, and, and you should. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're in an, we're in an AT conversation with a client and I'm like, oh crap. I just spent so long telling them to buy this expensive, you know, ALR screen and not, and they didn't tell me that they wanted all the speakers behind the screen or the, or the wall is so skinny that we have to put, put the speakers behind the screen. So now I either have to backtrack a little bit and kind of, and not lie to them, but I have to backtrack and go, Hey, because of your budget, now we have to get this white screen that I just told you is pretty much garbage. Um, and that can be upsetting to them. Um, or just tell them, Hey, always turn the lights off. Like I said, it looks okay with the lights off. You know, you're just never going to get any TV like picture from it. Um, or they have to go really hard with their budget. And sometimes the budget allows for it and sometimes it doesn't. So um, I kind of want to talk about those two things to help you decide and maybe even give you some options and, and uh, some ideas outside of that. Right. So bottom line is white screens suck. Right. So at the end of the day, if you want an ALR screen or I'm sorry, if you want an AT screen, those words are or those terms are close. But the budget doesn't allow for this. You can put the screen speakers behind the screen, do a white weave. They look really good. They're 4K capable, all that kind of stuff. But you're going to end up, you know, not getting the picture quality you want. Um, sound quality is great, though. If your budget allows for it, this screen is a 150 slate AT screen. So this screen probably retails in the 6000 realm, um, something like that. It's all done by uh, by hand. And actually, if you can get up close to it, um, I want to see if the camera picks up the, the hole. So this is what an AT screen, uh, you're going to see these, these holes, especially on the brighter, brighter sections through here, possibly as the clouds cascade through it. But this screen has what's called a micro -per for a, very tiny holes. So instead of a weave, you're still getting that smooth, perfect image. You're still getting the acoustic, uh, you're still getting the uh, ambient light rejection capabilities of a slate screen. They can't go as far as to um, put holes in a black diamond yet. I know they've tried and, and failed a few times because they're so quality driven as a company, but um, this particular screen, they can do it uh, because of it's still thinner. And so this is kind of the best of all worlds, in my opinion. I own this same screen at home in a 153. Um, and I've got, you know, some speakers behind there. We'll do a separate video at my house one day. My theater's 80 grand and, and uh, really, really nice. <laughs> but we'll, we'll go there one day and kind of, I'll give you my go all the way in theater system, you know, behind the screen system. But for today, I really want people to make the right decision when it comes to an AT screen because they really go online and they just pick up that white screen off Amazon or whatever. And I feel like that's a really big mistake um, because a lot of times I'll meet that client. And I'll say, why don't we do this instead? Right. You don't want to see anything, but why don't we do, you know, some nice in walls on the side of the screen with an on wall beneath it or find some other way to, you know, to, to give you your audio, um, you know, that's a clean, nice way. Uh, but, you know, without, um, you know, without sacrificing too much because you're going to sacrifice something, right? When there's holes in the screen, even this screen, you're sacrificing some picture quality by having tiny holes in that screen. You're losing, you know, up to 20% of brightness sometimes. Um, not going to matter with a really, really nice bright Epson projector or anything like that, but um, you're still losing brightness. Those brightness is still lost through the, through the holes of the screen. Um, plus, you know, that's just less pieces of the screen technically that's there to reflect light back to your eye. So, you know, you're losing a little bit of brightness on top of that, 
Um, you go white, and now you're now you're already at, you know, having no ambient light rejection capabilities, no capabilities to make black, and now you now you've got holes in it. So now you're losing the light from your projector. So that's even even worse scenario, right? So if you can't afford a slate, you know, AT screen, I always say still get the slate screen if it's in your budget, um, and then find another way to you know have a guy like me design the audio around the room if there really really is no space between it and you're trying to go wall to wall that's okay too there's angled in ceiling speakers that you know if you're at the right angle it will sound like they're coming from the screen there's ways there's places in the room that you can get creative and design around those things to still give the person their picture quality they're looking for um, and, and the audio quality they're looking for so when it comes to acoustically transparent screens a lot to know about it Try to stay away from white, and I'm always going to say that no matter what. You'll never hear me break on it. Um, but, you know, I realize that sometimes budget doesn't allow, the room doesn't allow, and we do sell white acoustically transparent screens to people sometimes. If it is the right thing for them, their budget, they've been explained to them, the benefits, um, you know, and things like that, and, and obviously the, 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 the challenges and struggles with doing that as well. So as long as we're very forthcoming with that, I don't have a problem selling it. Um, but it's not always the right thing for people and white screens are almost never the right thing for people. So uh, I, hope, I hope this was helpful. I hope it's another um, insight into you know, us and the way that we do things and how we speak to clients and how really everybody should speak, should speak to clients in my opinion um, with truth and, you know, we, and not profit in mind, just straight up, this is what's correct for you. And uh, like and subscribe and hopefully we see you soon, thanks.